The traditional summer selling season has now commenced, following what has been a relatively busy start to the year for Ireland's commercial property market. Investor demand remains robust, and interestingly, the volume of activity that's underway off-market in the investment, development and hotel sectors of the market is quite considerable. With some sizeable assets on the market at the moment, and others due to be released for sale over the coming months, these sectors in particular are on track to record impressive transaction volumes in 2019. Meanwhile, in the occupier sectors of the market, activity remains brisk as the summer months approach. Following a very active first quarter in the office market, during which more than 107,000 square metres of accommodation was let in Dublin, the volume of requirements for office space in the capital has continued to rise over months, recent months, with an all-time high of 370,000 square metres of active requirements currently live. The quality of the large-scale mandates is particularly noteworthy and bodes well for continued job creation in the capital. The pace at which outstanding requirements translate into completed leasing activity, however, remains to be seen. Some occupiers feel under no pressure to make location decisions quickly in the current environment, while others consider the volume of construction in the city and the availability of flexible office solutions from operators such as WeWork. However, it is important to point out that a large proportion of the office stock indeed 47%, that is currently under construction in the capital, has already been pre-let or is reserved, meaning that occupiers just cannot afford to be complacent and put off location decisions in the hope that a large volume of stock will be available over the next two to three year period. There have been several significant planning decisions granted recently, the most significant being the decision by Onboard Planola to grant planning permission for a 22-storey office tower at Tara Street in Dublin 2, which will deliver over 16,500 square metres of offices in due course. Meanwhile, in Galway, planning was recently granted to Ratigans for the development of the Crown Square development, which will deliver over 31,000 square metres of office stock. While prime headline rental rates in Dublin remain stable at €700 Euro per square metre, rents in the suburbs have increased over recent months. Take up in the Dublin industrial and logistics sector reached more than 95,000 square metres in the first quarter of the year, with 33 individual transactions signed in the three-month period. Although there are some new entrants, Take up in the industrial sector is largely emanating from the expansion of existing companies across a range of different sectors, with a notable increase in requirements for large buildings of late. A number of occupiers are now in the process of relocating out of Dublin Port, and this is creating additional demand for service sites along the northern section of the M50. In addition to the volume of stock transacted in Dublin during the first quarter of the year, there is a large volume of industrial and logistics accommodation reserved at present, which in due course will result in pre-lettings of the new stock that is under construction in various locations around the M50. Encouraged by the strength of appetite for new buildings, there has been a notable increase in planning activity in this sector in recent months. Encouragingly, the majority of developers are taking professional advice in terms of carrying out detailed due diligence in advance of lodging planning for new schemes and additional phases of existing schemes to ensure that they are developing industrial and logistics product that will ultimately satisfy end user requirements in terms of location, size, specification and fit out. With all buildings having to comply with near zero energy rating NZEB regulations from next January, this is also now beginning to have an impact from a design perspective and in turn affecting construction costs in this sector. Prime industrial rents remain stable at approximately €106 Euro per square metre or 985 per square foot, while rents for secondary and provincial industrial buildings have increased over recent months in line with the strong volume of demand being experienced in this sector at present. According to Visa's most recent Irish Consumer Spending Index, consumer spending in the Irish market was up 2.7% year on year, while e-commerce was up 4%. There's also been an encouraging volume of activity in the Irish retail property market of late, with several new entrants, including Oliver Bonus, Leon and PF Changs, recently announcing plans to open their first Irish stores and several other international entrants expected to make announcements over the coming months. 
Take up in the Irish retail sector is steady, despite the frustrating length of time it is currently taking to complete transactions due to protracted legal processes, planning delays and requisite consent applications. Ireland's first new retail accommodation in years is now under construction, with landmark developments such as Central Plaza and the Chatham and King development underway in Dublin city centre, and new retail accommodation also under construction in Cherrywood in the south suburbs of the city. Grocery retailers are in expansion mode at present, while demand from health and beauty sector occupiers remains selective but strong, particularly for units that have been previously fitted out. Meanwhile, the food and beverage sector remains active, but primarily concentrated in prime locations and schemes that can deliver healthy footfall. According to the most recent MSCI Irish Index, the Irish commercial property market has achieved a total return of 7.8% in the year to the end of the first quarter of the year, a level of return that compares very favourably with returns from real estate in other jurisdictions and also returns from other forms of investment in this extended low interest rate environment. Transactional activity in the Irish investment market has also continued at pace over recent months buoyed by strong occupier market activity. Following the completion of almost 600 million of investment transactions in the first three months of 2019, a number of high profile assets are currently being marketed, both on and off market, including several office buildings and build to rent opportunities. For example, the Grade A Bishop Square office building in Dublin 2, which is mainly let to government tenants and which has recently been extended and refurbished by Heinz, is currently being marketed, guiding 180 million euro. Demand from domestic and international investors remains particularly strong, as evidenced recently by the depth of the demand for the Reflector office building in Dublin Docklands, where a preferred bidder has now been identified. Yields for shopping centres and secondary retail warehouses have softened further over recent months, mirroring a trend that has been experienced in the UK and across Europe at present. Meanwhile, prime office, industrial and indeed multi-family yields in the Irish market remain stable, but have potential to harden a little further over the coming months as new transactional evidence materialises. A busy summer season is now in prospect, with good visibility on product due to be launched over the coming weeks and months. Recent news that Green Reach PLC have decided to initiate a sales process for the company or the entire portfolio of prime assets will result in additional demand and attention being focused on the Irish commercial real estate market over the coming months. The built to rent sector, while clearly not the panacea to Ireland's housing crisis, nevertheless has a meaningful role to play in helping to address the country's housing supply demand imbalance by providing much needed rental accommodation and associated amenities. The sector has been receiving a lot of focus in recent months as the sheer scale of appetite for this form of investment from investors and renters alike has been increasingly tangible. Having accounted for almost 30% of overall investment spend last year, this sector is now on target to again account for a sizable proportion of total investment in Irish real estate in 2019. Our latest research shows that as much as 6.3 billion euro is actively targeting the built to rent sector in Ireland, up from 5.3 billion this time last year, with over 30% of this capital emanating from the US, 24% from Europe, 22% being domestic and 12% coming from Canada. In addition to much publicised demand for built to rent opportunities in the Dublin market, there's also strong demand for purpose built student accommodation in Dublin, Cork and Galway, although investment opportunities in this particular specialist sector are few and far between. There's been quite a bit of activity from a planning perspective over recent months, although it remains to be seen how much of this residential stock will get delivered in the short to medium term, particularly considering the impact of construction, cost inflation on deliverability. In one of the more noteworthy announcements, planning was recently granted for up to 3,500 residential units at the former glass bottle site in Pool Bag. There is a stipulation in the planning permission granted for this site that no more than 100 to 150 units in any apartment block within the scheme can be designated as PRS or build to rent, while 25% of units will comprise social and affordable units. The Irish market has yet to see a grant of planning for a shared living, co-living concept being granted, 
although several promoters are in discussions with planners on this, and we expect to see some further applications being lodged, particularly in the postcodes of Dublin 6, 8, 7 and 8 in due course. The Irish government recently announced plans to extend the duration of rent pressure zones. As a result, these zones, where residential rent increases are restricted to 4% per annum, will now remain in place until the end of 2021 at least. A new Residential Tenancies Bill, which will, among other elements, provide greater protection to tenants, is also due to be enacted later this year, while restrictions on Airbnb are due to come into force from July 2019. All elements that those operating and investing in this specialist sector of the market need to be mindful of. The recent acquisition by York Capital and Westridge Real Estate of the former Kevin Street DIT campus on three and a half acres in Dublin 8 for 140 million euro to accommodate a mixed use office and PRS scheme has dominated headlines in the development sector in recent weeks. Aside from this trophy transaction, where the guide price was significantly exceeded, there have been signs of stabilisation emerging in Ireland's residential land over recent months, influenced by an easing in house price inflation, as well as rising build costs. Although transactional activity in the sector remains unabated, with 155 million of land sales having completed in the first quarter of this year alone, in a combination of on-market and off-market trades, residential land prices appear to have started to stabilise, which is welcome considering that affordability and deliverability are so topical at present. The central bank's macro prudential rules are impacting on pricing and absorption rates in the new homes market, and in general it appears that fewer parties are bidding on sites that are being marketed at present, with those that are bidding comprising traditional developers as opposed to speculators or, or land traders. Even though only four hotel sales, totalling approximately 36 million between them, completed in the Irish market during the first quarter of 2019, this masks the significant volume of transactional activity underway off-market in the hotel sector at present. Several sales processes are now nearing completion, which will provide a welcome boost to transactional activity in due course. The Dublin market remains fundamentally undersupplied in terms of hotel rooms, a fact that will become increasingly obvious as tourists start to arrive in even larger numbers over the summer months and as the government clamps down on Airbnb rentals from July onwards. It is therefore encouraging that a number of hotel projects are currently under construction in the city and that there's been continued activity from a planning perspective over recent months. We continue to see particularly robust demand for prime Dublin hotel opportunities, with a considerable weight of money targeting trading assets, hotels that are subject to occupational leases, and indeed, hotel development opportunities. Many unsuccessful underbidders on recent transactions are understandably frustrated at the shortage of prime hotel opportunities being offered for sale at present. With trading conditions continuing strong and demand outstripping supply, now could be a very good time to sell. From an investment perspective, there's been considerable attention focused on a mixed-use investment property at Half Moon Street on Lavitz Quay in Cork, which was recently launched in the market, guiding 34 million euro. Most of the other investment opportunities that are being offered for sale in Cork at present are relatively small lot sizes. As a result, this high-profile institutional-grade asset is generating considerable interest from a range of Irish and international investors and is expected to be keenly bid. As the summer season officially commences, there are increasing signs of development activity underway in the occupier se sectors of the market in Cork, with 10 cranes now visible on the Cork skyline, delivering high-quality office games, student accommodation and hotels. In addition, more than 5,500 square metres of new industrial stock is currently under construction at Blarney Business Park and a planning application for another 1,115 square metres standalone unit has also recently been submitted. This is very encouraging considering that our research shows that the current rate of vacancy in the industrial sector in Cork is 5.7%, down from 7% this time last year. The volume of residential development activity is stark by comparison, pointing again towards the need for some additional supports or incentives to improve the viability of much-needed apartment construction in Cork City. 
Demand for sites remains strong, as evidenced by the appetite for a 7.24 acre Johnson and Perrot site on the South Douglas Road, which recently went sale agreed for a price in excess of 10 million euro. The largest development site to be offered for sale in 2019 so far is 69 acres at Balancholic, which is currently being marketed, guiding 20 million euro. In summary, following what has been an exceptionally busy first four months to the year, a busy summer season is clearly now in prospects for Ireland's commercial property market, both from an occupier and investor viewpoint. To download our full bi-monthly report, please visit the newsroom of our CBRE Ireland website at news.cbre.ie.